Okay, so now we're going to put all this information together in a, something we're going to call a heating and a cooling curve, all right? So on a heating and cooling curve, diagonal lines indicate changes in temperature for physical state, and horizontal lines indicate changes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me say it again. Diagonal lines indicate changes in temperature, and plateaus indicate changes in state. And this is going to make sense if you if you um if you can think about it if you're relaxed enough when you go through it. It's a little bit scary. There's a lot of, a lot of pictures here and such. Okay, but look at here. We're going to add heat to a substance. Okay, and we're going to see what happens to the temperature as we add the heat. So as the heat added, right now, if we take some some ice, the solid water. Okay, it's at negative 40 degrees. Negative 40 degrees. We take heat. We take ice and we add heat to it. As we add heat to it, the temperature of the ice is going to go up. Temperature of the ice is going to go up, okay? It goes up until we get to a certain point. And when we get to zero, wait, that's the melting point of water, right? When we get to zero, all the heat that goes into it is goes into melting it. It doesn't go into changing the temperature, right? And then once it's all uh, um, melted, right all that we're going to keep putting heat into it and that's going to take liquid water now and that's going to increase the temperature right you see that increases the temperature like there it is right there okay now once it gets to 100 we're going to get to the boiling point you see that we get to the boiling point got a big bug in here you probably hear that thing buzzing around once we get to the boiling point right then all of a sudden we got liquid water at 100 degrees celsius there's liquid liquid water 100 degrees Celsius, all of the energy that goes into it, because we're adding heat still, right? We're adding heat as you go along here. All the heat that we add is now going into boiling it. It's still at 100 degrees Celsius, but we've got to make sure all the molecules have enough energy to become gaseous, okay? And then once it's all gas, then it starts to increase the temperature again. All right, so this is what a heating curve is. And uh, I'm going to show you another one. The steps of the heating curve... Here's, here's going backwards now. We're removing heat this time. If we're removing heat, we start out with steam, right? And as we remove heat, the temperature goes down. And it goes down until it gets to 100 degrees. And then all of a sudden, we start condensing. Now I'm going to show you the formulas we had here, right? This formula here is Q is equal to M, change in temperature, specific heat of a gas, right? This is Q is equal to M heat of vaporization, right? Because we're not changing the temperature. We're just seeing how much heat does it take to get that ma mass, whatever the mass is, into, we're going to condense it, right, back into a liquid. This is Q is equal to M delta T S H. Can you read my writing? Q is equal to M delta T S H. Okay? That is when we're just taking the liquid and we're changing the temperature only. That's what that is, okay? Now when we start to freeze, that's going to be Q is equal to M H of fusion, right? And this is going to be, again, Q is equal to M, I think you can see that okay, right? Delta T, the specific heat of ice. This is the specific heat of ice. This is the specific heat of water. Right, and this is the specific heat of steam. Okay, so obviously that's a lot of formulas. It would be a really difficult question if I gave you something like that. I said, all right, so we've got five grams of steam. How much energy is it going to take, or is it going to? How much energy can we get out of it if we take it to five grams of ice? Right, five grams of steam. Let's say at 140 to five grams of ice at minus 20. How much heat do we get out of it? Right, and you would have to add up all of the heats from each of these different stages. All right, so we're not going to do that. We're going to do that's a lot. It's one, two, three, four, five. We're not going to do that, but we're going to do this. And I want you to, I, I strongly encourage you, pause the video and use the hints I gave you on the previous slide to develop some kind of path for this. Okay, so let me uh, suppose that you did that. And I'm going to say we're supposed to calculate the total heat in joules needed to convert 15 grams of liquid ethanol to 25 grams 
I'm sorry, at 25 degrees Celsius to gas at its boiling point, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take liquid at 25 degrees Celsius and we're going to heat it up to liquid at 78 degrees Celsius, right? And then, and we're going to get a Q for that. And then we're going to get a Q for this and it's going to be liquid at 78 degrees Celsius. Can you read my writing? To a gas at 78 degrees Celsius, okay? So this, these two steps, we're going to call this simply warming, right? And we're going to call this boiling. Am I talking too loud? All right, so here's how it goes. Q, the first part is going to be M delta T, the specific heat of ethanol. That's the first part. And we're going to add to it because we want to see how much we get out, how, how much how much heat is it going to take? How much is it going to, in joules? We're going to add to that the mass times the heat of vaporization. Okay? So let's do it now. I'm going to do it in blue. The mass is 15 grams. I'm going to leave the units out because it was just make it clumsy, although I hope you don't, right? The change in temperature is going to be 25.0 to 78. I can't do that in my head, so I'm going to do it in my calculator. The change in temperature is going to be 78 minus 25. It's going to be 53. And the specific heat is going to be, i got to look that, oh, there it is. Heat of vapor, specific heat, there it is right there. 2.46, right? And that's in joules per gram, degree centigrade. All right, now I'm going to do that and say the mass is 15.0 and the heat of vaporization is 841 joules per, right? Okay, I haven't really left myself enough room here for this, but I'm going to put this all in my calculator. You should do the same thing. Times 15 times 53 times specific heat 2.46 plus 15 times 841. And that gives me 14570.7 joules, which I'm going to rewrite up here as 14. Point. Now I'm going to write this to three sig figs. I'm not going to go through and figure out, right? We've done a lot of that sig fig practice. I'm going to say 14.6 kilojoules. I'm just going to go to three sig figs. All right, and that's all for this section. That's a lot, isn't it? There's one more learning check, and I'm not going to do this with you. This is too much. But have a look at that. Feel free to bring that to class and ask me for the answer. All right. Good luck. Go back through these videos again and practice them. It's excellent practice for you, and it'll, you'll be setting yourself up for, for uh, success for later, more complicated topics. Good luck.